Welcome to Convinced to be Catholic, the show where I explain why I'm Catholic and why you should be Catholic too. In just a couple days, this upcoming Monday, May 21st, the Catholic Church will be celebrating a new feast day for the very first time. It's called Mary, Mother of the Church. Now, I already know some of you guys out there are thinking, here we go again, another example of the Catholic Church elevating Mary to a place she never should have been, another example of the Catholic Church with all this crazy Mary stuff. Well, I for one am very excited about this new feast day, and one of the reasons I'm really excited to, to celebrate Mary, the mother of the church, for the first time as a new feast day is because the fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the mother of all Christians is taught in Scripture. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what? I've never seen that in the Bible. Well, you might be surprised. There's at least two passages in Scripture where it does teach that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the mother of all Christians. One of them is a little bit more implicit. It's not clearly taught. It's implied. And in the second one, it actually is explicitly taught. The first one is in John chapter 19, verse 26. And it says this. This is when our Lord was on the cross. It says, When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking, that doesn't say that Mary is the mother of all Christians. It just says that she became the mother of St. John, the apostle, who was the author of this book. But St. John the Apostle never actually refers to himself by name in this book. Every time he brings himself into the story, he always refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, many interpreters take this to be a literary device by which the reader is actually invited to put himself or herself into the story. Why? Because Every Christian is the disciple whom Jesus loves. So every time St. John refers to himself in the story, he's inviting you to put yourself into that part of the story. And if this is true, it means, which it, this, this interpretation makes a lot of sense to me, the understanding of the disciple whom Jesus loves being a literary device by which the reader is, in, is invited to put himself or herself into the story. That makes a lot of sense to me. And if that's true, it would mean that our Lord is not only giving the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. John, but he's actually giving her to be the mother of all the faithful in this passage. Now, if that last passage didn't convince you, which I know for a lot of you Protestants out there, you're thinking that probably wasn't a very convincing argument because you just don't interpret that passage the same way that I do. And if my interpretation is correct, it's kind of only implicitly stated, so I can understand that. This next passage, though, is very explicitly stated. It explicitly calls Mary the mother of all Christians. It's in Revelations 12. Now, it starts with, a, with an account, with a crazy apocalyptic account of a woman basically giving birth in the sky with a dragon waiting to eat her baby. This is what it says. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth in anguish for delivery. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems upon his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child that he might devour her child when she brought it forth. She brought forth a male child. One is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which to be nourished for 1,260 days. Now, a lot of Protestants don't agree that, that the woman in this passage is the Blessed Virgin Mary. But if you just take a second and think about it, it's clear that this is, in fact, a reference to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, 
Could it be also referencing other things at the same time? Yes, but in apocalyptic literature, signs and symbols can refer to more than one thing at a time. So could the woman in this passage be a reference to all the people of God as a whole? Yes. Could she be a reference to the people of um, Israel? Yes. But is she also a, is she also a clear reference to the Blessed Virgin Mary? Absolutely. Here's why. Because if we take the three characters in this passage, one of them is a, a son, one of them is the dragon, and one of them is the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, who is the son? The son is obviously our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the dragon? It's obviously the devil. And so the question would be, who would the mother be? Well, if the son is our Lord, and if the dragon is the devil, if both of those two characters refer to a literal person, then if you want to continue that and follow your, your rules of interpretation for this passage, apply them evenly across the whole text, then the woman, even if she might apply to other things too, she has to also apply to the literal mother of this son, which would be the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, so far, it hasn't called her the mother of all Christians. It's just said that she's the mother of our Lord Jesus, which I know everybody already agrees with. But if you just go a little bit farther to uh, verse 17, it says this, Then the dragon was angry with the woman and went off to make war on... Listen to this. And went off to make war on the rest of her offspring on those who keep the commands of God and bear testimony to Jesus. So, at the end of this passage, the dragon fails at devouring her baby. He fails at destroying her. So instead, in his anger, in his rage, he goes off to make war on the rest of her, the woman's offspring, the woman's children. And who are the woman's children? It says who they are. Those who keep the commands of God and bear testimony to Jesus. So who are the people who keep the commands of God and bear testimony to Jesus? They're Christians. So are Christians the children of the Blessed Virgin Mary? Is the Blessed Virgin Mary the mother of all Christians? Absolutely. If you're a Bible Christian, if you're a Protestant, you have to believe that because it's clearly taught in this passage of sacred scripture. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you're a Protestant and you'd like to look into this more, I would recommend getting the book Behold Your Mother by Tim Staples. Thanks for watching this episode of Convinced to be Catholic. See you next time.